YouTube family, welcome back to another oversimplified video reaction. And um, well, I just finished reacting to the Cold War Part One, and um, I had a bit of spare time, so I'm going directly into Part Two. So um, where did we leave off? America and um, Russians are still no, the American government and the Russian government are still having their recent contest on whose um government is better whose government is more productive and um that's basically it so um let's get into this go this video was made possible by skillshare an online learning community where you can learn just about anything support my channel by signing up using the link below and get your first two months for free okay for anyone who thinks recent u.s history has never been as crazy as it is right now allow me to present to you the 1960s extreme cultural division major political assassinations and the closest the world has ever come to nuclear apocalypse shocked by the cia's intrusive methods for putting down socialism in latin america a certain fidel castro met with a certain che Guevara in a bar in mexico city and the two so many things happening awesome beards and overthrew the cuban government which is exactly what they did cuba had been america's summer playground and america didn't like seeing a communist regime being set up in its own backyard so the u.s immediately began training up cuban exiles to invade cuba and overthrow castro however as the day of the operation came closer, Kennedy wanted to conceal any U.S. involvement in the plan, so he massively scaled back American air support, and as a result, the Bay of Pigs invasion was a humiliating defeat for Bay America. Of pigs? But Castro felt there was still an impending U.S. threat to his regime. Meanwhile, in the Soviet Union, Khrushchev had a lot of medium-range nuclear missiles that couldn't reach America, but they could if they were positioned, say, on an exotic Caribbean island off the coast of Florida. Hey, I'm a communist who hates America. You're a communist who hates America. You know what that means? Alliance. We should fall in love. No. Oh. No, no, you're right. That's a better idea. On October 14, <laughs> 1962, a YouTube spy plane over Cuba noticed something strange. Sir, you need to look at this photograph. You're right. That's the cutest dog I've ever seen. Sir, I was referring more to the Soviet missile. America freaked out as they realized what was going on. They were completely vulnerable, and they had to act fast. They knew that airstrikes or an invasion of Cuba would likely mean nuclear war with the Soviet Union. So Kennedy came up with another idea. A blockade. The U.S. Navy announced it would stop and search any Soviet ships heading to Cuba and would sink any that did not comply. In response, the Soviet put its military into full combat readiness. The U.S. did the same and began. Can you imagine these two countries doing this? Imagine living in these countries and you are reading the news. Oh, wait, did the people not know this was happening? I would be freaking out if I knew that this is what my government was doing because it's it is almost apocalyptic. Imagine. Buying up plans for an attack on Cuba. Things were escalating fast, and both superpowers were getting ready for World War Three. Emergency communications. World War Three. Can you imagine bringing up that word? Kennedy's demands for the missiles to be removed, and for the first time in history, U.S. Defcon One, we're all dead. Defcon Two, America. Defcon Three, someone's about to get liberated. Defcon Four, Russia, please. Defcon Five, anyone want to go get a burger? I'm only paying attention to DEFCON 1. Strategic Air Command moved to DEFCON 2. DEFCON 1 means nuclear war. The Soviets shot down a U-2 spy plane over Cuba. A Soviet nuclear submarine in the Caribbean mistakenly believed war had already broken out, and two of the senior officers gave the go-ahead to fire its nuclear torpedo. Thankfully, the third senior officer, this beautiful man, refused to authorize the decision. The U.S. finalized its preparation. <laughs> Which beautiful man? Out, and two of the senior officers gave the go-ahead to fire its nuclear torpedo. Thankfully, the third senior officer, this beautiful man, is he beautiful? Yes, yes he is. What, what's your name, sir? Vasily Akipo. Used to authorize the decision. The US you are not just good looking. Not, Beauty and brains. Set to decide the day and time for the Cuban invasion. Khrushchev was like, hey, you know if you just removed your missiles from Turkey, we'd remove ours from Cuba? Peace yeah. contest. Yeah, that sounds good to me. It was a bit more complicated than that, but at the last second, the two sides finally came to an agreement. Soviet missiles were shipped out of Cuba, and the world breathed one gigantic sigh of relief. Except for one. I would do that. Phew! Let's hope that's the biggest crisis of my presidency. Unfortunately for him, his presidency was to end with one. Having nearly blown up the planet, a few changes were Assassination. First, the superpowers agreed to a limited test ban treaty. Secondly, the Soviets ousted Khrushchev and replaced him with Leonid Brezhnev, who was a kisser. He liked to kiss. Both sides were deeply concerned at the prospect of so that's the biggest crisis of my presidency. Is that a real picture? His presidency was to end with one. 
Having nearly blown up the planet, a few changes were made. First, the superpowers agreed to a limited test ban treaty. Secondly, the Soviets ousted Khrushchev and replaced him with Leonid Brezhnev. Is that why they drew him with puckered lips? Who was a kisser. He liked it. What? <laughs> this really happened? I'm going to Google this. To kiss. Okay. Both sides were deeply concerned at the prospect of nuclear war, but still, the arms race raged on throughout the 60s and 70s. U.S. intelligence worked out that the Soviet's nuclear arsenal was not as powerful as they previously thought, but in fact, it was America that held the advantage. ABMs and MIRVs were developed, and the doctrine of MAD. If both sides knew they'd be completely destroyed by a nuclear war, neither would risk starting one. But even without Simple. the world was already feeling the effects of nuclear weapons. In 1966, above the pleasant town of Palomares in Spain, a U.S. bomber collided with a tanker in air, and four hydrogen bombs fell and landed near the town below. It hasn't exploded, so I'm Can sure you imagine living in a town war. like this? Uh, hey, I wouldn't need that if I were you. Okay. What were you going to do today? Go for a swim? Yeah, I would. Are you There's a right bomb now? nearby. Yeah. yeah. How would you? It took the Americans two and a half months to find one of the bombs, which had gone missing in the ocean. This was the 14th time America had Imagine lost... Imagine if that bombs went... if that went off. Nobody knows how many bombs the Soviet Union lost. So sleep well tonight. After Kennedy's assassination, Vice President Lyndon B. Johnson took over, and he inherited a developing crisis in the East, Vietnam. Back in the 50s, the Vietnamese had kicked their French colonizers out once and for all, and the country was divided into two. In the North, a communist regime, and in the South, an anti-communist regime. Both were led by very sweet-looking old men, but don't let that deceive you. They were both ruthless dictators, and both dreamed of reuniting Vietnam under their own regime. So dictators, the dictators, the dictators, Front, men in power. To carry out a Crazy men in power. In South, with Soviet support. The U.S. sent advisors to help train the South Vietnamese to deal with the threat, but President Diem's brutal policies pushed more Just like Korea, South another North vs. South uh, crisis. Over the next decade, the situation escalated to a breaking point. America feared the domino effect. That is, if South Vietnam fell to communism, would Cambodia be next? Then Laos? Thailand? Burma? India? They're LBJ so scared communism will spread out. South Vietnam or sending in the troops, and so in they went. From 1965, America found itself in a war unlike anything it had ever fought before. Let's play Spot the Viet Cong Soldier. Did you see him? Of course not. That's because millions of young American men were drafted and sent to fight a ruthless enemy who used the thick jungle as a shield. It was nearly impossible to tell where the enemy was, or worse, who it was. And as a result, in the jungle the population against got natives. Caught up in the brutal crossfire. The city of Saigon found itself under regular attack, and America launched a bombing campaign in the north during Operation Rolling Thunder. The Viet Cong used the Ho Chi Minh Trail running through Laos and Cambodia to supply the campaign. It was a long and brutal war, and I could never do it justice in this video. But in terms of the Cold okay. War, Vietnam, Vietnam was probably war. the biggest of many, many global conflicts. I don't think that's out yet. A turning point. Under the threat of nuclear war, the two superpowers began working to make their relationship more constructive. And as a result, their ideological battle shifted away from the potential of direct conflict and more towards attempting to influence smaller proxy wars around the world. In the Middle East, the Soviet Union provided aid against Israel during the Six-Day War, and then again when the U.S. backed Israel during the Yom Kippur War. In Africa, the Angolan Civil War saw U.S.-supported South Africans fighting Soviet-supported Cubans. In the conflict between Somalia and Ethiopia, the superpowers interestingly switched sides as regimes changed. And the U.S. continued fighting the spread of communism in its own If we can't fight each other, we'll just support other people who we'll fight each other. These proxy wars were fierce enough to begin with. Proxy wars. intervention amplified the destruction and... Let's see. Oh, there it is. I just knew my country would be there. The Nigerian Civil War. 1967 to 70. This was a brutal time. To live in Nigeria. Over 2 million people. Created alarming levels of human suffering throughout the third world. And in Vietnam, that human suffering was all being broadcast back home by good old television. Going into the late 60s, America was a changing nation. This became this. This became this. And this became this. The new slogan that was taking root. Make love, Make love not, not war. war. The majority Is that of real? did not approve of Johnson's handling of the Vietnam War. And in 1968, a silent majority elected law and order candidate Richard Nixon. As the Vietnam War appeared to be increasingly unwinnable and public opinion turning increasingly sour, Nixon made the decision to be 
begin bringing the troops home and ended Thank Ho's you. involvement in Vietnam Just by get this man out of this Two war. Years later, the South fell. The Cold War was now taking its toll on both superpowers. In Russia, a huge percentage of the budget was still going to the military. People were and still hurting, not to the and they people. just didn't have access to the same lifestyle and goods as the West. And what did they have to sh- Are you still trying to peel potatoes with a shoe? <laughs> we have vegetable peelers. The fact to the West now. How did these guys come up with this? Go for it. They weren't even winning the space race anymore. Both sides needed to reduce spending in order to rescue their economies. Exactly, so spend on your people and just... Of hostility, ...otherwise known as detente. To improve relations, Nixon became the first U.S. president to visit Moscow in 1972, and Brezhnev returned the gesture a year later. A number of treaties were signed, including the 1972 SALT agreement that limited nuclear weapons. Relations Thank you. With China were even improved Make by love, not war. With the US Make peace, not war. However, internally, China was still pushing anti-capitalist propaganda, which led to some mixed messages. Nixon even visited China in 1972, and it was a barrel of laughs. Today, the president walks among priceless treasures from China's golden age. Among them, a pair of ear stoppers used by the emperor to keep from hearing criticism. That's real. Okay, that's definitely real. Why does the laughter feel so fake? Ha <laughs> ha ha! It's time to laugh now. When in reality, we all hate each other. Everything was going great for Nixon until it was uncovered that back home he was being a very naughty boy, violating constitutional protocol. I'm announcing today my resignation as president, and I'm passing the office to my vice president, Gerald Ford. Wow. You mean in America the people can actually remove their leader when he breaks the law? Why not just rule by force? Where's the corruption? And my first act as president is to pardon Nixon. Ah, there it is. After the whole fiasco, Americans <laughs> decided what they really wanted was just a nice, safe guy who wouldn't cheat on them. So they elected Jimmy Carter, and the two sides met in Vienna where they signed yet another strategic arms limitation treaty. It's an honor, Premier Brezhnev. Likewise, President Carter. Please yeah. don't do that. But that's mm-hmm. not to say there was no longer any tension between the two sides, because there was. Heaps of it. Once again, the Soviet Union put down further attempts at reform and rebellion in the Eastern Bloc. The Euro Missile Crisis saw new and improved classes of I'm sure in all these um, protests, the people the lost their lives also. Their because that's what happens. No matter what, people will always die at the expense of some dumb people's decisions. Afghanistan to prevent the U.S. sponsored Islamic insurgency. And in response to these various crises, Olympic Games were boycotted. Conservatives were concerned that U.S. policy had become too soft, and in 1980, they decided to President to put a tough on communism, so they elected Ronald Reagan, and Reagan came in, guns blazing, so and many presidents the human rights in the U.S. He made a speech calling them an evil empire, and he also wanted to renew the arms race using technological advances in computing and lasers. He came up with the Space Defense Initiative, also known as Star Wars, which was basically a big defensive anti-nuke shield around the country, but a lot of people thought it was a pretty dumb idea. The Soviet Union perceived this shift in rhetoric as the USA getting ready for war, and they were feeling especially threatened as their relationship with their communist ally China had broken down. Relations took a big hit in 1983 when the Soviets shot down a Korean airliner that had strayed into their airspace, and it looked like the world was going right back to mid 20th century Cold War tension. But then Brezhnev okay. got really old and died, and was replaced by this guy who was really old and died, and was replaced by this guy who was really old and died, and he was replaced by Mikhail Gorbachev. Coming into office in 1985, he was the real. Game changer. His philosophy differed a lot from previous Soviet leaders. He felt that the reason the Soviet system and economy was struggling was that it didn't allow the Soviet people to find satisfaction. Everyone with their ideologies. And lived in fear. Gorbachev wanted the Soviet people to be happy, but Good. unlike previous Soviet leaders, he actually made the change happen. Within the first Good. couple of years, he began the political movement for more openness and transparency, and the restructuring of the Soviet political and economic systems. And change very quickly took effect. People could criticize the government. They could enjoy Western pop culture. The media interviewed Margaret Thatcher. But Thank most you. A bit of freedom of speech. Pizza Hut. All hail to Gorbachev. He also knew that the arms race needed to end in order to rescue the Soviet economy. And a positive relationship with the West must be established. Constructive dialogue reopened and resulted in the INF Treaty, which saw all intermediate range missiles eliminated, which was huge. Reagan's tone towards the Soviet Union began to soften, and things were looking up. But what Maybe evil so isn't the right the word. Block? For decades, the Soviets have been brutally suppressing any attempt at change. Now, would they be allowed? And 
That was the exact question on Hungary's lips when the Prime Minister visited Moscow. Gorbachev's response didn't necessarily agree with the reform, but he wouldn't stop them either. He was prepared to let the Eastern Bloc choose its own future. This was massive, and the okay. Hungarian leaders began planning three multi-party elections. Poland followed suit and also held elections in June. The anti-Soviet party Solidarity won 99 out of 100 seats in the Senate. But not just that. In Hungary, the barbed wire border between East and West was removed. The Iron Curtain was unraveling. But not all Eastern Bloc leaders were happy. Notably, East Germany was still ruled by a hardline Stalinist, Erich Honecker, and many East Germans were still eager to get out. They had been trapped by the Berlin Wall, but now they were doing the math. If they could travel to Hungary, we can't go Hungary's west. We can't go Hungary. Loosened, Hungary's border is the to the west. We that can't summer, go west. East Germans decided Hungary was the latest top politician. Hungary, country. please. They traveled there in droves and using various methods. Can you imagine just to get to the to west? Austria and the west. Honecker was furious and blocked travel to Hungary, but that civil liberties train had started rolling and it wasn't stopping. Thousands more flocked to the West German Embassy in Prague, where they stormed the fence around the Embassy Gardens and a temporary refugee camp was set up. In oh, September, they were the that the desperate to, to get out. By a train. Back in East Germany, the people were running on a civil liberties high, and they wanted their next hit. Dissent was growing. Over time, demonstrations turned to mass protest, with plainclothes secret police officers doing their best to put down the dissent. But it had grown United Germany. Control. And worse, the biggest demonstration was yet to come. We're going to put all this down by force. Right, force? Guys? guys, unfortunately, everyone had realized what he had not. This was bigger than them. The entire East German Politburo voted him out of power. On November 4th, over half a million East Germans kicked up the streets of East Berlin. For many, there was still one big target left in their sights. That damn wall. The pressure on the East German government was too great. And on November 9th, they made a bit of a chaotic announcement that the travel ban between East and West... Alright, alright, you guys win. ...which wasn't meant to take effect until the next day. And crossing guards still had orders to shoot on sight any who tried to cross. But that night, huge crowds gathered at the crossing points and the guards were overwhelmed. In an astronomically historic moment, after decades it of is historic. and travel restriction, the people were allowed to pass through. Thank you. And West Berliners couldn't believe it, and celebrated together throughout the night. Some even climbed the wall and began to topple it. The Iron Good. Curtain had fallen, and a year later, Germany would be reunited. Elections in Bulgaria, a peaceful revolution in Czechoslovakia, and a violent one in Romania brought to an end communist authority in the Eastern Bloc. America decided it would be best if it just stayed away and let the change happen, as the anti-communist movement continued all the way back to Moscow. Gorbachev had given the people the freedom to demonstrate. Now, they demonstrated for an end to the communist single-party rule, and Gorbachev had to give in. For the first time in history, elections were held in which candidates not officially endorsed by the party were allowed to run. Ambitious rival of Gorbachev, Boris Yeltsin, was the democratic movement. Now, things here get quite confusing, and the dissolution of the Soviet Union is a complicated topic. So believe me, this is oversimplified, but it went a little bit like this. The Soviet Union was made up of a number of smaller Soviet republics, okay. the largest of which was Russia. Yeltsin got himself elected the president of Russia and began a struggle for sovereignty against Gorbachev and the greater Soviet Union. Communists no, were horrified at what Gorbachev was allowing, so they briefly kidnapped him and tried to set up their own emergency government. But Yeltsin and his supporters all gathered around the White House in Moscow and were like, no, we have it time. So the hardliners had to concede and released Gorbachev. Wow, Good. thanks, Boris. That was a close one. No problem. And thanks to you for all the great freedom you've given us. Any time, pal. And just to inform you, I've used that freedom you've given us to go behind your back and make a deal with Ukraine and Belarus to dissolve the Soviet Union and set up the Russian Federation. In other words, you're no longer in charge. I am. Just found a way to so, backstab him. So decades of tension and the everlasting threat of nuclear war finally came to an end as democratic governments were established in many of the old Soviet republics. And the world got along together forever after. Right, guys? World War Three. Please no. Where can I learn to do that? Skillshare. Anything but World War Three. Online learning community with classes in design. Is that the end of the video? And more. Learn how to code your own game. That's the end of the video. Learn how to animate videos like mine. Wow. Premium membership gives you unlimited access. Nice video, guys. Just it's just the same thing happening, even. From the previous wars, just without much battles and much fights, it's still the same problems with leaders. Uh, I don't know. It's leaders competing, competing ideologies with other leaders, and not putting forward what the people really 
need in their minds that's what people really need but most of it is just most of it especially on the well i don't want to criticize but i feel like any um any kind of government that puts its people's freedom um freedom of speech freedom of um expressions you know that puts that ahead of any other thing that should be what the world should strive for that's just it i don't really have much to say but that should be it first are the people free um i don't know should mothers be happy to have male children because in periods like this if i was a mother i wouldn't want to have male children that will go off to fight some war that's been dictated by some people that i don't know about you know so anyway it didn't really affect africa as much as it affected europe so i'm a bit thankful that we Okay, it did affect because we had our civil war and uh, civil war and everything, but not as much as the events of World War Two and World War One affected almost the entire world. So anyway, that was a nice video, guys. Um, thanks for hanging out with me this long. Um, um like this video, guys. Please subscribe. Um, if you have any video requests, any videos you think I should um check. Guys, I react to everything. I, from if it's music, if it's any video, if it's something I can learn from, I'll react to it. So please, guys, um, just leave suggestions for me either in my email or in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe. Have a nice day, guys. Take care. Bye.